Chapter 5, The Making of a Soldier Ever since I was four-year-olds, I felt fear whenever I saw anyone wearing a green uniform. From the time my family and I crossed the United States-Mexican border, crawling underneath the barbed wire fence that separated the two countries, our father warned us that we had to hide from La Migra, the border patrol guards dressed in green uni uniforms. If they catch you, you'll be deported back to Mexico, he said repeatedly. We managed to evade the green uniformed men for 10 years, but they ultimately called, caught and deported us when I was in eighth grade. And even though we came back legally, I continued to feel apprehensive ev apprehensive every time I saw a green uniform. And now I had to wear one once a week during my entire freshman and sophomore years. I had no choice. Like many land-grant colleges, Santa Clara required all undergraduates to take two-year basic military science program, Reserve Officers Training Corps. The one and a half units course, courses consisted of two hours of lecture and one hour of drills. Every Tuesday morning, we dressed in our army uniform and marched in Buckshaw Stadium on the east side of campus. The night before, my classmates and I spent hours getting ready for a Tuesday morning ritual. I know how much you like doing this, Smokey teased me, taking out his army uniform from the closet and gently laying it on his bed lengthwise. I ignored him and continued doing the reading for my Western Civilization class. From the corner of my eye, I saw him pressing his trousers with the palm of his hand trying to get rid of, of the wire hanger crease marks. I put down my textbook. You can iron mine when you're finished with yours, I said. Deal, if you spit shine my shoes. We both laughed. I took out my uniform, hung it on the doorknob, and brushed off the lint with my hands. It's easier and faster if you use scotch tape, so Smokey said. He took out a roll of tape from his drawer, from his desk drawer, cut off a strip, holding both ends, pressed it over the uniform. You're a genius. You'll be promoted to general in no time. Just follow my orders, he said, and I'll make you, make you a good soldier yet. Yes, sir. I saluted him and clicked my heels. Smokey left to get a haircut from, the Ernie, from Ernie de Gasparis, my only classmate from Santa Maria High School. Ernie had set up shop in his room on the third floor of Kenna Hall and cut hair for free of, for free of charge uh, for his friends. I continued getting ready to pass the military inspection on Tuesday. Using an old sock and brass solution, I polished the clip belt buckle, the two small round insignias um, that were pinned to each side of the jacket lapel, and the insignia of the American Eagle pinned on the front of the cap. To polish the black leather and low quarter shoes, I spit on them and furiously rubbed them with a small cotton ball until they shine like glass. I had just finished polishing the second shoe when Smokey returned sporting a crew cut. Ernie is ready for you, he said. It's time to get rid of your hair. Unlike my classmates, I had long hair with an elevated wave in the front. I, ha I hated getting it cut, but the choice was not mine. As cadets, we were expected to conform to uniform grooming standards, and we did. On Tuesday morning, every freshman and sophomore male dressed alike and wore a black plastic name plate on the right breast uh, pocket flap. As we crossed the campus on our way to Buckshaw Stadium, Santa Clara looked more like a military camp than a university. We reported to the field house where, we, where each of us was handed an M16 infantry rifle that was about 20 inches long and weighed about seven pounds. We were informed by Captain Glassman, or Glasson, this is probably Glasson, by Captain Glasson that, dur that during ROTC activities, cadre and cadets of senior rank were to be addressed by rank and name, and then in the chain of command, each one of us would be addressed as cadet and name. We were to use the term sir and salute when conversing with or replying to a cadet officer or officer of higher rank. These rules and discipline reminded me of my father who demanded that we obey him at all times and not question, not question his authority. We were then grouped in platoons and lined up in rectangular formation. A senior rank cadet went up, up and down inspecting each one of us, making sure we had everything in order brass and shoes shined, crew haircut, and clean shave. If anything was out of compliance, we got demerits, which affected our grade. After inspection, we jogged in place for one or two minutes, counting cadence and carrying our M16 rifles as we marched, following orders, attention, left march, left face, right face, count off, double time. At times when I got confused and did a left face instead of a right face, I heard the senior cadet holler, pay attention, cadet. Yes, sir, I shouted back automatically, thinking how silly and what a waste of time these drills were. In the afternoon, we attended lectures given by Captain Glasson or Colonel O'Brien on the American military history and map reading, which I enjoyed 
because I liked learning about the past, but I still dislike wearing the army uniform and going to drill. Eventually, though, having to wear it stripped me of my dreaded, uh, my dread of men dressed in green uniforms. More important, it pleased my father. When I gave him a picture of me in uniform a few months later over Christmas, he said, I'm proud of you, Miho. You can make something of yourself in the army when you're poor.